Hey pilots, Hobbs here bringing you the Grenadier mech. Now, as you can probably guess, if you've ever played TF2, uh, you played the Demo Man, Grenadier's pretty similar. Pause here for the mech stats, but yeah. It's another heavy mech, it's a suppression mech, and uh, yeah. Just gonna teach you how to the art of suppression. Now it's a little bit different on how you would play like a defensive mech like the Brawler. This one, it says a little bit differently. It's more about keeping people away from a point rather than getting them off once they're there, so. But anyways, let me explain how to use this mech. Let's get let's get right to it and blow stuff up. Okay, so judging by the name, you can probably tell that the Grenadier uses grenades as its weapons. So, the primary weapon that it comes standard with is called the Revolving Grenade Launcher, or the RevGL for short. And of course, the secondary weapon, as you can tell, is the Grenade Launcher from the Vanguard. The special ability, as I had mentioned in my Brawler video, underwent a change. It used to be a turret mode, much like the Rocketeer and the Vanguard. Uh, that uh, it was called the artillery turret, but and what it did was that it, it does the same thing that uh, what the ability does now. Now the ability is called uh, artillery shot, and of course I'll explain that later. But yeah, this thing did go through a change. So if you had seen any older videos of the Grenadier uh, using its ability and it had the turret mode in there, uh, yeah, uh, just know that's a little bit out of date. Okay, so obviously this is a suppression mech as I had mentioned earlier, and. Uh, what better way to suppress people than by spamming grenades at them? I mean, people would have to be stupid to walk into that 4th of July celebration. Now, how you would do it is that, you know, it's pretty obvious. All you gotta do is just hold down the button and then, you know, you shoot grenades at people. <laughs> now, it would seem a little bit easily easy, but uh, the suppression part is easy uh, as far as, you know, how you do it in the weapon technique. But a weapon technique for killing a person, like where you're actually trying to shoot them and kill them, it gets a little bit difficult because Obviously, as you can tell, the RevGL, it's not a hitscan weapon, it's a projectile weapon, just like the regular grenade launcher is. And the RevGL is hard to use because you cannot airburst it, uh, like the uh, grenade launcher you can, because it's a secondary weapon, but yeah, the re revolving grenade launcher, uh, how it works is it, it's, it's similar to the grenades as far as tra trajectory and bounce and whatnot. However, uh, they detonate after they bounce about a second after they bounce once, so... You can use that to your advantage to learn how to time, uh, like as far as distance, you learn how to bounce the grenades to be able to deal damage when you want them to. And uh, also because of the nature of those bounces, you can actually use the grenades uh, of the RevGL, just like the grenade launcher, to shoot people around corners. And it's, that's what the Grenadier is really great for, is on maps that have like uh, really tight alleyways and corners that you can bounce grenades around and keep the enemy suppressed while staying out of the lo of their line of sight and therefore they cannot shoot you which is what the grenadier is really really great for is uh, suppression around corners so far as uh, trying to hit an enemy you can learn how to uh, where the bounce is and how far that goes before it explodes trying to hit an enemy with that splash damage or you can learn how to aim for direct hits now as far as direct hits if you can land direct hits with the, the secondary weapon the grenade launcher already then you shouldn't have too much of a problem landing direct hits with the red gl because as i said before they have very similar uh, trajectories as far as, uh, you know, the how far you need to lead target. Pretty much you only have to lead for uh, only one type of a weapon. You don't have to lead for lead two different uh, aiming pathways for uh, two different weapons. You can just use the same, uh, like, aiming, uh, the, the, you can use the same, you can lead the target the same amount and the both weapons should be able to deal damage. And also just remember about those, uh, the bouncing grenades. It's because you can get some pretty fancy kills with them around corners, or like you know, if you're if you're having a little bit of a rough time, you can bounce them off walls, and it, it, at that point, it's kind of fun. But like I said, but as like far as suppression goes, that's when you, I'd use the, uh, the the full auto mode because as you as I told you before, uh, weapons like this, I don't like to use uh, the full auto mode unless you know I'm just trying to keep the enemy uh, pinned down or trying to give covering fire. Because at that point, it's not. I'm not just aiming. At that point, it's just me trying to just you know get my shots out there. So, but like when I'm actually trying to kill an enemy, I take my time with my shots and I don't uh, use the full auto mode of the Rev GL. I I uh, I semi auto fire it. And also, the Rev GL has a really really high heat generation. So that's something you really gotta watch out for. Because the heat, because you don't want overheating in this mech. Because like I said, overheating in any heavy mech is very uh, is very detrimental to your health. Okay, so now that I kind of covered how to use the Rev GL, as I said, it's just a grenade launcher. Once you just learn how to lead your targets, it's fairly simple to use. But, uh, yeah, the ability was called Alt Artillery Shot, as I had mentioned earlier. And what it does is that it increases your damage output by, like, I think maybe 10 20% or something around that range. And it also increases the explosive radius of your weapons uh, by about 10 20%. 10, I don't know the exact numbers. But as you can tell, 
you have that for about 10 seconds, and so that is a lovely thing. You get much more bang for your buck as a Grenadier, and how you'd want to use it, don't use it as a damage out boost like you would like on the Berserker to try to kill somebody. It's much more strategic than that. Pretty much, you use this ability when you when your enemies are defending a point, and you want them off. Because once you pop this ability and you start just lobbing in grenades and spamming grenades in there, they will run. And that's how you run to use this ability. But yeah, now we're going to move on to the next weapon. Okay, so this next weapon I'm going to showcase on the Grenadier is the alternate weapon unlocked at rank 3. It is my favorite on the Grenadier, and it is also one of my favorites in the game. It is called... The Heat Cannon! Okay, I'm going to I'm gonna just be straight up with you guys and tell you this. Like, while I said this is my favorite weapon, this is, this is one of the weapons that will take you the longest time to try and learn because it is extremely, extremely tough to use. As you can tell, uh, it, it's not a hitscan weapon at all. It's... I'd say it's a tank cannon crossed with a rocket launcher. And so it has two firing modes. Uh, it has an uncharged shot, which which semi-auto fires and actually fires pretty fast. And it does build up quite a bit of heat if when you use it a lot. But it does a ton and a ton of damage. And it also has a charge up mode where you uh, charge up the gun for about uh, two, three seconds. And then it, it the, the charged blast has a bit does do a bit more damage has a humongous blast radius easily equal to that of a total launcher and uh, yeah it also flies a lot faster so how, how you're gonna learn how to do that you gotta learn how to manage between uh, uncharged and charged shots however right now uh, telling you how to use the heat cannon it, it's pretty complex so I'll just go how it would compare uh, as far as play style how it compares to using the Rev GL. Now, how it compares to the Rev GL is that obviously, I'd say this type of Grenadier has a bit less suppressive power, but a bit more killing power. And what I mean by that is because it, it doesn't have like the bouncing grenades and uh, whatnot. However, it is easier to land direct hits. Well, you know, once you learn how to use the heat cannon, it's easier to land direct hits, and the uh, heat cannon shots do a lot more damage than the Rev GL grenades. Well, not a lot more, but it does do a significant amount more. But however, like I said, the heat cannon is much more difficult to be able to learn. As you can see me trying to land charge shots here and there, uncharged shots here and there. Uh, I only charge shots when I don't see my enemies, and that way I can, you know, do a little bit more damage and try to get that first initial strike to be very powerful. Because charge shots, they'll take you a long time to charge up. It takes you two or three seconds to charge up, and then remember, inside of an intense fight, two or three seconds is a really, really long time. And so when you charge up the heat cannon, you use that generally to try to finish somebody off at a distance. Or, you know, you see somebody fleeing from you, you can charge up the heat cannon and BAM! Nail them! Because it, it moves a lot faster than uncharged shots do. And also, like, when you use uh, the ability with the heat cannon, as you see me doing here, it becomes a lot easier to land your shots because, uh, while the uncharged shots have a very small splash radius, if you use the ability, uh, the artillery shot ability, it, it makes it a little bit easier to land them. And so, and, but then also they do increase damage as well, so how you can use in this part like I said it, this has more killing power to it than as far as suppression it can still be used for suppression because you know it's still you're still lobbing explosives everywhere and people are not going to want to walk towards that however how you'd want to play with the heat grenadier I'd say is kind of like peekaboo if you ever watched my brawler video I'd say learn to do that like uh, learn how to play peekaboo like with the like you would with a flak brawler but it's just remember you're using a, a heat cannon and you have to lead your targets a little bit and so, uh, I'd say the best way to try to learn and how to you see me using the heat cannon as far as leading it is just look and watch how I use it. Uh, it's really hard to explain. Look, like look where I aim and where I uh, and how far I try to aim and how uh, how I move and all that. Uh, as far as you know, trying to use the heat cannon because you can see me trying to you poke me poking around corners a lot. You know, sometimes I'll go out in the open and fight when I need to, but a lot of the times I'll try to stick to corners and I'll uh, poke every now and then from around the corner and shoot people. But yeah, like I said, it takes a long time to try and learn to land direct hits because those do the most damage. It, even just landing the small splash damage of uncharged shots is pretty tough. Yeah, for new guys, uh, the heat cannon is definitely not for new guys. I'd stick with the Rev GL and the suppressive function of that. But you know, if once you learn how to do the heat cannon, it's it, it's a lot of fun on the Grenadier. But as far as learning the heat cannon, I recommend you use that on the Infiltrator, because the Infiltrator is a lot more forgiving as far as using the heat cannon than the Grenadier is when you use the heat cannon. So yeah, I mean, I will release an Infiltrator video later on telling you, uh, you know, going over the heat cannon and how to use it. And obviously, you know, that's where I would suggest you learn to use the heat cannon. But you know. 
Uh, yeah. And then you will finally understand why I like to call my Heat Grenadier the Fat Filtrator. You will find out one day what that truly means. Well, yeah. We're gonna move on to the next weapon in a little bit, which is actually significantly easier to use than the Heat Cannon. But yeah, it's... I don't know why it's the prestige weapon, but personally I think the heat cannon should have been the prestige weapon because this one's easily the hardest to use out of all of them, but eh, oh well, I'm not the game developer, so yeah, let's get moving. Yes, here we are, the rank 5 prestige weapon. You can probably guess why I said this is a lot easier to use than the heat cannon. It's our old friend, the Point D Vulcan. Now, I called this loadout the Fat Berserker because of uh, how it works, and because of the, how it works the artillery shot is at. You still get the weapons, uh, you, still, you get the weapons uh, boost the attack boost, as you would, and you also get the splash damage radius, you get the increased splash radius, but you only get that on your, uh, uh, grenade launcher, not the Vulcan, because the Vulcan doesn't have any splash damage at all, so. But yeah, like I said, I kind of call it the Fat Berserker, because, uh, uh, that's pretty much kind of how it, it just feels like with the ability, because the ability will just increase the damage, and, uh, you know, you do get the explosive bonus on your grenade launcher, but the grenade launcher... It doesn't benefit as much from the artillery shot's explosive bonus as you would the uh, with the heat cannon or the rev GL. The rev GL and the heat cannon make the best use out of the artillery shot function of the grenadier. The, the Vulcan grenadier, uh, like I said, I'd say it plays kind of like a fat berserker. I, I know if you ever use the Vulcan on the uh, Vanguard, it's somewhat similar, except remember you don't have a turret mode because you're a grenadier. You only have that uh, damage boost when you know uh, once every. Uh, 40, 50 seconds, uh, which I think is the cooldown for artillery shot. But yeah, it plays kind of similarly, except that, of course, the Grenadier has a bit more armor and it's a bit slower, so you do want to play the Vulcan Grenadier a bit more defensively. Now, how the Gren Vulcan Grenadier really works is is that it'll scare people off of uh, points as well, because, like I said, when you pop that ability, people see you with a Vulcan, <laughs> a Vulcan that has increased damage people are just gonna run and you know they see a heavy mech charging at them with a Vulcan and there has an increased damage people are just gonna run and that's what definitely what the Vulcan Grenadier is great for is uh, I say it can be aggressive like that when it needs to be but it is definitely very much a defensive uh, mech as well because of how slow it moves I mean it's not that slow but the Grenadier yeah, it is faster than a brawler quite a bit faster than a brawler but it is still slower than a Vanguard so always keep that in mind but yeah, if you had watched my Vanguard video that I had released previously, then pretty much how the Vulcan Grenadier works is very similar to a Vulcan Vanguard. Uh, uh, you know, it's just a little bit different as far as the ability is concerned, because the ability is the damage boost instead of the defensive boost of the turret mode like you get with a Vanguard. So, just keeping that in mind, those are the main differences between the Vulcan Grenadier and the, Van and the Vulcan Vanguard. Like I said, they are very, very similar, so if you can play the Vulcan, if you can play the Vulcan uh, Vanguard, as fairly well, you'll probably do pretty good with the uh, uh, the Vulcan Grenadier. Assuming you don't use the turret mode too much on the Vulcan Vanguard to do most of your work, and that's how you somehow win, then you should be okay in the Vulcan Grenadier. But like I said, the pointy Vulcan isn't exactly my favorite weapon on the heavier mechs because of you know the high heat generation it has, and uh, because it, it you're too slow to get into the optimum range very quickly. So that's all my only gripes with the uh, that's my gripes with the. Uh, the, the pointy Vulcan. Like I said, the heat cannon is my favorite because of how hard it is to use, and thankfully that, because of, like a lot of other people, they don't use the heat cannon, which is nice, so I don't have to deal with the frustration, because trust me, the heat cannon can get very, very deadly once you learn how to use it. So, you know, like I said, if you have the patience to learn the heat cannon, learn that. But if, if all else fails, you can just go for the Rev GL. Rev GL is, you know, it's the original weapon for the Grenadier and will suit its purpose the best. Alright, and of course, just to wrap up, I'm going to quickly go over the items and internals. Now, my items, uh, recently I have changed the item setup I'm probably going to do on all my mechs. I'm still going to keep the shield because of, uh, like I said, I had mentioned I love to duel inside of the shield, and plus it saved my life a lot of times, and I'm still going to keep the repair charge because, you know, it's extra armor on the go, and then I don't have to initiate a repair sequence, and I'm also going to uh, probably get a detonator in place of the hologram for all my mechs because the detonator uh, I've used it on my G2 assault which I recently got and I will do a video on that for you guys but I managed to get that and it worked out really really well and I I kinda like the detonator because in some defensive situations where I just where if I just could just get that little extra bit of damage in I could have been able to get a secure kill and of course my internals are still the same evasive device to try and get away 
basic deflectors, you know, for a little bit of extra defense when I'm boosting and dodging, and of course the air compressor on my Grenadier, because uh, as I had mentioned in my Brawler video, why I use the air compressor on it, you know, same reasons, just, you know, a bit more maneuverability for when I'm forced to go in the air. But yeah, that was my uh, tutorial on the Grenadier, next time will be the Rocketeer, but yeah, this is Soldier Hobbs signing off, like, comment, subscribe, do what have you, but I will see you next time.